Welcome back. Thanks for staying with Newsroom. Now, Russia are hoping to make it to the knockout stages of the FIFA World Cup for the first time in the post-Soviet era. The country hosts uh, the FIFA World Cup from the 14th of June to the 15th of July in 12 venues spread across 11 cities, including Moscow, St. Petersburg and Sochi. The country is likely to see less fans turn out as compared to the 2014 Brazil World Cup. That if polls are anything to go by. It's due to issues of sexual discrimination, fan violence and its tainted political standing, among other things. For more on the... Russian readiness to host the tournament. We're joined by Russian ambassador to South Africa, Mikhail Ivanovich from our Pretoria studio. A very good morning to you, ambassador, and welcome to Newsroom. Good morning, and thank you for having me here. At the World Cup, Russia will face Saudi Arabia, Uruguay, and Egypt in Group A. How confident are you that the nation can, in fact, progress beyond the group stages? Well, uh, first of all, we uh, wish success uh, to all the participants of the World Cup. Uh, soccer can be sometimes unpredictable, but uh, I'm sure that uh, at least the Russian team uh, will uh, apply all its energy and all its skills uh, to move forward. Uh, I wouldn't like to predict uh, any outcome, but uh, I'm sure that all in all we shall have a great festival of sports in Russia uh, because uh, we've invested a lot of efforts, uh, time and energy in making sure that both uh, fans and uh, the teams uh, were comfortable uh, with, with the World Cup. Here we'd like to thank uh, South, uh, South Africa for sharing your experience from World Cup 2010. We had extensive um, talks with your experts on that. And uh, all together, we tried to accommodate in the way we were, uh, we will be conducting the World Cup, uh, all the best features uh, from previous World Cups. I'll outline uh, just two of them. First, the fan ID, which uh, not only gives uh, you an opportunity uh, to uh, enter uh, the, the matches, but also to use free of charge uh, public transport and even to commute between th uh, the cities where matches were taking place. Uh, another one, uh, by the way, uh, both President Putin and the FIFA President Infantino received uh, these ideas already. Uh, the other one uh, is the FIFA Fan Festival. Uh, this actually is a public uh, place where uh, matches can be viewed from big screens. Again, this uh, comes from the previous experiences and we expect millions of people um, uh, to watch it. Um, altogether, we expect that the World Cup will become a great uh, festival of friendship and togetherness and will bring a lot of positive emotions. Ambassador, there have, however, been incidences uh, which, uh, which have in the run-up somewhat hampered that uh, festival of sport that Russia are hoping for. FIFA fined Russia and the Football Association 25,000 euros following racist chants by supporters during a friendly between yourselves, Russia and France. And that was in March. Last season, there were 89 reported cases of racism. What's going to be done from the Russian Football Association side and from Russia as a host country to ensure that this doesn't take place during the World Cup when all the eyes of the world are on the country? Well, racism is not typical of Russia. Uh, unfortunately, it still exists, it exists in the world. And if there were some uh, individual manifestations uh, of those, uh, necessary measures has, has, uh, have been taken and will be taken to make sure that no such things is repeated uh, during the World Cup uh, from uh, any uh, fan, be it Russian or uh, coming from any other countries. Of course, we denounce racism altogether. Will there be a special satellite offices for the players or for anybody that may experience some incidents of racism where, where they could go, seeing though there has been cases of racism. Um, and as I said, 89 reported cases during last season. 
in the Russian Premier League. Um, will there be something like that available to spectators and players during the World Cup? Uh, well, uh, uh, I'm uh, speaking now about uh, security as such. Uh, there will be uh, uh, special uh, monitoring of a security situation. It is not exactly racism. Uh, there was special monitoring of security si uh, situation at the stadium and uh, uh, this uh, will um, help us trace any uh, incidents uh, of racism as, as well but uh, I don't think you should uh, overestimate uh, this matter particularly uh, putting stress on Russia in, in this case uh, as I've said Russians are not racists and uh, um, uh, we should recall how uh, uh, my country was helping South Africa uh, in its struggle against racism, against apartheid. So uh, you shouldn't be worried about that. Absolutely. Well, we do know, Shantae, what it's like uh, to be building up towards a big tournament like a FIFA World Cup where there are global perceptions about your country, which perhaps could be untrue, which I suppose is what the ambassador is also alluding to. Yeah, definitely. A very good morning to you, ambassadors, as I bring myself into the conversation here. Uh, you know, just a follow-up question from, from Valen. Uh, we've seen that a lot of companies have, uh, have come forward and there have been lots of protests and anti-gay campaigns. What has your response been to that? Sorry, uh, could you repeat the question, please? I didn't get it. In terms of the companies that have come forward, as well as other protests and activ activations that have been taking place with regards to discrimination, with regards to gay rights, uh, with regards to race relations, what has the response been to that? Mm, there is no uh, gay discrimination in, in Russia. Uh, we do have our laws. Uh, but uh, 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 all uh, citizens of uh, my country are equal, uh, so uh, uh, I just do not quite understand what uh, uh, relevance it has uh, to, to the World Cup. Uh, I do recall now um, a cartoon in Business Day uh, preceding uh, the Sochi Olympic Games uh, where uh, uh, my president was picturing, uh, pictured slaying a gay person in Sochi. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, there were a couple of gay bars in Sochi uh, during uh, the Olympic Games and no one was worrying about this. So uh, I'm feeling now that there is uh, a very negative and false perception of a situation with human rights in Russia being created, uh, including uh, by uh, this claims of a uh, violation uh, of their rights. As I've said, uh, this is not the case. Indeed. Uh, well, you know, South Africa is seeking a seat um, in the United Nations Security Council. Um, should South Africa get a seat, how could this benefit um, all the BRICS countries? Uh, you mean uh, the uh, uh, South Africa entering uh, Security Council for uh, the year 2019 2020 yes uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, this uh, will be uh, very positive because we already have positive experience uh, with uh, cooperation uh, with our South African partners and within BRICS and uh, we are uh, very much uh, looking forward to cooperating with our BRICS partners in uh, the Security Council. There was a case actually when all, uh, of, uh, all the five countries of, of BRICS were uh, members of the Security Council and it was a positive experience. Yeah, just, uh, just while we have you in, in talking about um, you know, what's been taking place in Syria, we do know that uh, you know, Russia, to, Russia rather, to some extent has received uh, criticism for their involvement in Syria. What is your response to some of the critique that uh, Russia's involvement has gotten? Uh, Russia was invited to, uh, to Syria by its legitimate government uh, at the time of peril. Uh, mm, by that time, uh, uh, U.S.-led coalition was already p uh, taking part in the events in Syria, uh, claiming to fight ISIS and uh, uh, its allies. Uh, 
during several months of the coalition's fight against ISIS, uh, the territory uh, controlled by ISIS increased twofold. After Russia uh, joined uh, the, uh, the campaign together with the Syrian troops, uh, we f fairly quickly uh, made sure that ISIS uh, suffered uh, a crushing defeat. And uh, these days, uh, the situation is si in, in, in Syria uh, with regard uh, uh, to uh, ISIS is much better than it was before the involvement. Uh, so, uh, as I've said, we were acting uh, on the invitation of the um, uh, legitimate government of uh, Syria, uh, applying our efforts to make sure that this country stays unified, circular, democratic and stable. Uh, lastly, we saw last week, of course, the United States pulling out of the Iran uh, nuclear deal. Uh, just briefly, what is uh, Russia's position on that decision? Well, we are fully in favor of, uh, uh, of the deal uh, staying in one piece. Uh, we think that uh, it's important uh, to, to, to keep it, uh, to keep stability uh, in the region and to move forward. Definitely. I will cross back to uh, Valent uh, just to take us through uh, uh, some more sporting questions that she has for you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Ambassador, I'd just like to know how important it is for the Russian government and how much of a priority is it to put on a good show to the rest of the world, considering the kind of diverse perceptions uh, that are being created worldwide about Russia and about Russia's people? What uh, we are uh, working for is uh, to make sure that we have a real festival of sports. Uh, the questions you are asking uh, and uh, the way you are presenting Russia now uh, uh, involves politics and sports. We do not want uh, to mix sports and politics. It should be separate. As for the world perception uh, of Russia, uh, well, um, every country uh, is uh, perceived in the world in a different way. But uh, I should say that uh, uh, we are a normal member of the uh, international community and uh, uh, we are now uh, experiencing, I, thi I think, very unfair uh, attack, uh, inf information attack, uh, misrepresenting Russia, misrepresenting its domestic situation and what Russia is doing. Unfortunately, uh, there is a certain pattern uh, now where Russia is accused of whatever, anything, uh, on the premises of accusations or hearsay uh, and uh, uh, is, uh, is accused of something because it's very highly likely that it was Russia uh, who did it. This is stage one. Stage two, Russia is demanded to explain herself um, or uh, to uh, uh, prove her innocence. Uh, so we see that the principle of uh, guilt, uh, guilty before innocent is applied. Stage three, Russia says we did nothing. Then comes stage four, uh, when we hear that uh, Russia goes into denialism. But then comes stage five, sooner or later, when uh, we see that uh, uh, the so-called proofs or facts about Russia's bad behavior uh, become actually uh, a, obviously a hearsay. And uh, one of the good examples is a recent decision by the Court of Arbitration with regard to uh, a large group of Russian athletes who were uh, previously banned by International Olympic Committee from performing uh, on the ground of the so-called McLaren report. Uh, the Arbitration Court studied carefully all the arguments uh, with regard to, uh, to the report uh, and uh, made its conclusion that, in fact, uh, the so-called evidence and facts were a mere hearsay and acquitted uh, the uh, Russian athletes uh, fully. This is what I call the Colin Powell syndrome. You remember when uh, the United States attacked Iraq on the basis of the white powder showed, uh, shown by uh, the then Secretary of State Colin Powell in the Security Council. Fourteen years later, Colin Powell admitted that it was wrong 
uh, intelligence. So this is a uh, kind of uh, uh, pattern which we see. Uh, so uh, do not believe hearsay or fake news about Russia. We are a normal country prepared to cooperate with other countries in the world and we are making our positive contribution to the world situation. Lovely stuff. That's the Russian ambassador to South Africa, Mikhail Ivanovich. Thank you very much for chatting to your newsroom and sharing with us uh, some of the innovations, amongst which a free commute between host cities, which is absolutely massive, Shante, considering just the size of Russia and lots of people having concerns, certainly lots of football fans, about the distances that they'll need to cover in order to actually get from one host to another. Yes. But uh, that's uh, sports, a bit of politics, and uh, a lot of excitement building up to the World Cup, which takes place in Russia from the 14th of June. Shantay, you've got breaking news for yes. us.